Why is this avocado so expensive? Bothered. It's been three days. Why hasn't he texted? Bothered. Why is my boss such a hypocrite? Bothered. Why is my coffee so cold now? Bothered. Bothered, bothered, bothered. I know. Every day, there is always something to trigger us. And we're always left wondering, how can we stop all these people from just being so annoying? But the truth is, you have very little control over changing a subpar environment. You most likely will never be able to change a negative person's mindset unless they're ready to change for themselves. And you certainly won't be able to change your parents' outdated views on life and convince them that your way of success is the right way. And that's the truth of life. However, that doesn't have to be the truth for you. I'm a big believer that everybody has full control over their inner environment. That's why in this video, we are going to be unveiling the ways you can stop pain the ass situations from triggering you so that you only create exceptional experiences in your life. The thing is, it may be very painful to admit that the one reason why we are so focused on our daily pettiness is because we don't have a big enough vision to look forward to. This was a phrase that I once heard by a Thai MC now turned multimillionaire, Galame, and she says in one of the interviews, In other words, because you don't have a big enough purpose to work towards, you have so much time to dwell in useless thoughts. Now at first, I was so skeptical and thinking in the back of my mind, well she's been successful for a very long time. I grew up watching her as a Thai MC in the most reputable channel since I was like what? 10? Her credibility makes everything she says right, but I'm not living a multi-millionaire lifestyle like she is. Therefore, her advice cannot be implemented to my everyday life. And that was just me talking from my ego being shattered. That's right, as much as this pains you to admit, if you're not 100% committed to creating the best future for yourself, you'll be vulnerable to every single toxicity around you that honestly is always going to exist. And that's why I want to bring in a scenario of two people who is presenting with the same challenges but respond differently to them and therefore creating different outcomes in their life. Now let's look at the first person. We're gonna name her Striver. Striver was pretty much me in early 2022 where I was committed to achieving my version of success but approaching life in a completely toxic way. Now Striver is three weeks into her new job and she's currently aware that this job is not right for her. Although she has very high potentials in succeeding, she's firstly very underpaid for the skill sets and the experience that she has. She's only given the bare minimum treatment, doing work that has no relevance to her growth, and always finds herself in two hours pointless meetings, useless conversations, confusing guidelines, and just a very unfulfilling work life. In the midst of this, Striver is also trying to build her personal brand, cultivating her passion in makeup, and bringing her creative skill sets to the world. But she is so damn exhausted. She's starting to blame everything outwardly except for herself. Striver thinks, because I don't live near the beach or the ocean, water, it's so difficult for me to cultivate that it's girl lifestyle. And because of my lack of quality connections, every time I make a post, the existing community is too envious to share my post and therefore the Instagram and TikTok algorithm never picks up my content. These were my literal thoughts back in 2022 while I was working very hard and being disciplined towards achieving my goals. And while I had to admit some of these thoughts were true and valid, but what these thoughts did to me was influence me to make subpar decisions that created really annoying results in my life. As a result, Striver constantly finds herself taking 10 steps forward but 15 steps back and she is constantly attracting people that seem like they were going to add value to her but actually drains her instead. This was not an ideal way to be living at all. Versus, let's have a look at the second person which I'm going to name her Asa. Now Asa would have been my current self going back in time to live the same situation and these were the things I would have done. Asa is still presented with the same challenges where she's three weeks into her job and she realizes that this job is not right for her. She's aware that she's getting underpaid, but even if she moves to a different job, she's most likely also going to get underpaid. And if she isn't underpaid, she will still end up working overtime to the point where she has no energy or time to really nurture her creativity and build the life of her dreams. Yet she doesn't let this truth face her. She accepts that this is the reality of the environment that she's physically immersed in, but she doesn't give a fudge. Instead of getting upset, 
at her hypocritical boss. She turns inwardly and asks herself, how can I stop being hypocritical to myself? Of course, it is challenging to be that it girl who makes green smoothies, goes for 6am jogs and cultivates his perfect Pilates at 10am lifestyle when her environment is not set up for that. But still, on the days where she can't be swimming 20 laps at Bondi icebergs, she would substitute that with 30 minutes of mindful yoga. Instead of forcing herself to constantly hit targets and live in the future, she prioritizes her inner vibration. Whatever makes her feel accomplished for that day without burning herself out, she prioritizes how good she feels versus how she externally looks to others. Whatever environment she is immersed in, Asa stops looking for reasons why she cannot cultivate high value habits that moves her closer and closer to her goals every day. And most importantly, because Asa is not concerned with flexing her progress, where she is, how she spends her weekend to anybody. She has a lot of mental energy to focus on leveling up her work and really working on her internal evolution privately. As a result, she's also an amazing manifester. Now, while manifestation is a woo-woo concept, Asa is able to break down all these woo-woo concepts to make the actionable steps work for her on a daily basis. And I will share the real results with you in the next part of this video. So now that we've identified the pain point and we're also given scenarios on what these two people would do in the same situation, you might be thinking, well, how do these solutions apply to me? I'm a big believer that it's not about what you know only, but it's about what you embody. So we're gonna make sure that this information is applicable to you and you have actionable steps that you can take today to seriously stop giving a fudge about anything that you don't want to experience. Step one, decide that you've had enough and this is a no point of return for you. The thing with being one foot in and one foot out is that we may take five steps forward, but six steps back. So let me give you an example of the two times in my life where the no point of return was an absolute game changer for me. The first time was back on 26th of December, 2022. I was so fed up. And so that night I was snooping through all these people's Instagram and realizing, oh my God, all these Christmas celebration pictures are going to be on my feed. But there were so many times where I've deactivated this particular personal Instagram account. And what will happen is that I would be gone for four months and really leveling up my mindset, my physical health and my outlook on life. But after that four months, I would then go back and flex my progress to the same followers, the same group of people that don't really support me but still snoop through my content. And I realized that it was time to cut the cord for good. So I permanently deleted that personal Instagram account on that particular night. And not only did I delete that personal Instagram account, I also deleted my LinkedIn and Facebook because I knew that none of this was gonna help elevate my life to the next level anymore. I decided that it was time for me to cut the cord for good from my hypocritical self who says that she is so committed to leveling up her income her lifestyle and everything about her life, yet still embodies low value habits on a daily basis and always contradicting her own words. Long gone were the days where I'd be snooping through anybody's Instagram accounts out of boredom instead of me trying to force myself to stop scrolling by leaving my phone in the other room or not being able to sign into the app easily. I just cut ties with that reality for good so that I never go back to snoop through anybody's lives again. It was not relevant for my growth anymore and it totally helped me level up the next year although I was still presented with many challenges in that next year. By the end of that year, I also decided to cut the cord with WhatsApp. Now this situation may vary for you, but for me personally, the WhatsApp account that I had was not gonna help me successfully launch this YouTube channel. By the end of December, 2023, it was very clear that I had to focus on organizing my contents to launch Pat's platform. And at the time where I was filming my beach clips and editing at least a hundred of them onto my Pat's platform account before launching the actual channel, it was very time consuming, it required a lot of focus, and it also required emotional stability. I cannot afford to get triggered by anything, anything that my old self would have checked. I also cut ties with that reality so that I could narrow my focus towards what I want to create for my YouTube channel. I deleted everything that I didn't need for good because I saw a better life on the other side for me. Hence believing in my not yet existent best self more than my evident, undesired current self. Now this was
was the result of me no longer getting triggered on the first real day of publishing my YouTube post on the 7th of January. Yes, I did get a bit of views, but I still remember that time where I was so happy just to see my subscriber number change from zero to one. And I became even more happier to see my subscriber number change from one to three subscribers. By that point, I've already posted four shorts. Those four shorts took insane amount of hours, many months to prepare for. And I asked myself, damn, my hard work is kind of paying off, but why is it so hard for my YouTube shorts to get recognized? Yet, because I didn't have WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, or any distracting sources to turn to, I then just focused my awareness on how I could level up my content, therefore level up myself and how I approach each day of my life so that I always have creative ideas to create the best contents. And lo and behold, just a little a month has passed by. And there I saw 100 organic subscribers on Pat's platform. Now, when I say organic, I mean it was true organic because there was no pre-existing community on Instagram or Facebook. I literally deleted 90% of my contact. So I was only regularly in touch with two people and those two people had my YouTube link. So everything was built from pure algorithm and people that didn't know me seeing my content and trusting that they can subscribe to my channel. It was the best feeling ever. And just a week after that, I then had 200 subscribers. Now this may seem like an insignificant progress where oh, 100, 200 subscribers is nothing. But more than that, the life outside of YouTube was pretty good. I was able to sustain the exact results that I wanted for my physical appearance and my health. I had a balanced relationship with food. I had a balanced relationship with my workout schedules. And because I kept nurturing the momentum of I can make whatever I have right now work for me. Therefore, I started seeing all these micro results that validate to me that where your focus goes, your your energy truly flows. And that all starts from you. Literally just burn the bridges. Don't go back. Decide that you've had enough and this is a no point of return. You are now crossing the bridge to a brand new reality where you're getting every single thing that you want and having the best of every single world. Which then ties down to step two and that is get clear with who your most ideal self is and design micro habits that match that version of you. Now this may be something that you already logically know but to embody this as a discipline as a daily normal habit is really, really crucial. Yes, I know that meditation helps still your mind, but there were times where I was skeptical and thinking that I don't need to meditate because I already know all of this. And because I neglected these mini self-love practices, that's when my life started to spiral down the most. Now, just because a millionaire tells you to wake up at 4.30 a.m. doesn't mean that waking up at 4.30 a.m. will work for you. And that's why you have to trial and error and refine what works for this stage of your life. Now, it's very contradictory for you to be like, I want to grow my YouTube channel this way. I want to make this kind of money. But you're still keeping these little patterns where you're going onto Instagram and you're checking out, oh, what is she doing? What restaurant is she at? What is this celebrity doing? What is my distant acquaintance doing? How did she get this Chanel bag? How does she grow her business? All these counter habits are the exact things that actually deter you away from reaching that exponential growth. So once you cut tie with that reality, you now want to put your awareness on all the micro habits that bring you far faster and faster to your tangible success. For me, in my case, those micro habits was reminding myself every single day, I am enough. I accept myself exactly as I am. I have the power to create the life of my dreams. I'm now changing my story. I am beautiful. I am radiant. And of course, I logically know this. Let's be real here. I know that I'm pretty as self-centered as this sounds. It is facts today, but that doesn't mean I can stop reminding myself that I am beautiful from within. Not because I'm wearing makeup, not because I'm wearing fake nails, not because of anything, but because of the inner self-talk that I give to myself and therefore the outer results reflect my inner world. And also micro habits like swimming, long walks, yoga, Pilates, I try to adapt them according to how my body feels. Obviously when I was normalizing swimming 30 laps or 40 laps, but still doing other things that makes my body too exhausted, I have to find a way to adapt what kind of workout schedule works for my body so that it feels energized every day rather than super super, super energized, but then fully crashing the next two days later. And also the one mistake I want you to avoid is the 24 seven productivity trap. And it goes something along the lines of because you have once reached 30 laps or even 40 laps at Bondi icebergs, which was something that I did the next time I couldn't reach the same goal. And I was not even able to reach 20 laps because my body is tired. I start to blame myself and see myself as you're not enough because you're not able to sustain that goal. I want you to prioritize a routine that you can sustain over a long amount of time. Even if it seems like what is 30 minutes of basic stretch
stretching gonna do for my life? Look, if you compound this every single day, you will see yourself as a person that always takes care of herself. And that communicates to people around you that you deserve to be treated well, you deserve to be prioritized, and you deserve to have the best of every area of your life because your daily practices is proving that to you. And finally, accountability. Now you can do this in two ways. I have a good friend who is very obsessed with hitting targets. So he got into this accountability group with two other friends where they will report on every Sunday evening how many liters of water they drank, how many kilometers they ran, how many reports they completed, and just many accomplishments in the week just to keep each other motivated. And in the long term, he has really achieved the goals that he wanted to achieve, both in his swims and his role as a leader. But for me, accountability groups don't work because I don't like sharing my goals to others. However, that doesn't mean that I don't have accountability with myself. Every time I see myself dipping back to old habits, I will then start to journal and reflect what is causing this. And I try to logically understand that if you fall out of balance for one area of your life, then it will trigger other areas of your life to also fall out of balance. For example, when I'm overworking on this YouTube channel, I find myself getting so exhausted that I want to eat unhealthy food, regardless of how disciplined I am. And once I spot that micro dip, I come back and ask myself, okay, is this me reverting back to my old patterns? Am I still on track? And if not, how can I slowly switch back and get on track again so that we're always building the right momentum towards our goals? Accountability is extremely important because any day we can get obsessed with working and being overly productive also causes imbalance. I'm a big believer in finding balance in every area of your life. As much as you want to be obsessed with success and earning as much money as you can, I believe that a truly wealthy life is one where we are healthy inside out, that every day we are stabilizing our nervous systems. We're drawing boundaries with how many hours we work on our projects. We also draw boundaries with how much we work out per day. And there's never this sense of, let's push ourselves to the extreme, to the point where we actually crash. The more you nurture a balanced momentum, the faster the success comes. And this all starts from being accountable. I want you to actually sit yourself down and evaluate which areas am I doing well and why. You'll find that the more skilled you become at keeping yourself accountable, whether it's joining an accountability group or just having that journal and reflection with yourself, the easier it is for you to sustain the new identity because you know how to always keep her on track. So these are the ways that you can stop being bothered. It's not exactly about fixing the symptoms, which is feeling annoyed, frustrated, and bothered by your current circumstance. But it's about coming back to fix the root cause, which is changing your inner identity, changing how you see yourself, and getting clear with what kind of circumstances you will entertain. Again, guys, if you like this video, please feel free to subscribe and also let me know which kind of topic you would like me to do. I really enjoyed making this video for you, and I can't wait to keep growing on this journey with you. See you soon. Bye-bye.